great career here. And there's the Stanford Cardinal with a record of three wins and two losses. Defeated UCLA last week, and here they come. The Washington Huskies, who won five and lost none, ranked number two or number three in the nation, according to which poll you read, but very much in the national running. But they came in here two years ago under similar circumstances and were upset by the Stanford Cardinal. Here come the Washington Huskies. And Don James leads them out, one of the most respected coaches in the college ranks. Once again, Lindsey Nelson with Steve Davis. What about the Washington offense, Steve? I really believe that Washington's offense has struggled. They had been improving until last week's game with Oregon State every single week. But what happened last week, they could not sustain drive. They made mistakes, had turnovers. It was really frustrating. And part of the problem was young Hugh Millen. He's the junior quarterback. I think he's taking on too much pressure. He's got to lighten up a little bit, not put so much pressure on himself. And the way he goes, his confidence really makes a difference for this offense to be able to really balance and complement their great defensive football team. Well, of course, that's what it is, a great defensive football team, because they are number one in the nation in total defense. If you want to learn defense, you've got to watch Washington this afternoon. They are so talented. They are just what Don James wants, a disciplined, aggressive, intimidating style of defensive play. And he's got two players, or three players, that really we are going to highlight today. Holmes, number 90, he is a skilled position player in the down position. He is aggressive. He'll be an All-American, should be a first-round draft pick. Everything kind of revolves around him in that front seven. Then there are two people in the defensive secondary, Jim Rogers, the strong safety, the senior, the veteran, the intimidator, and Tim Peoples, who many of the people at Washington think may be the best player to ever come out of the Washington secondary. On the other hand, speaking of Stanford offense, they're playing with a quarterback who, although a senior, hasn't had a great deal of experience. Jack Elway probably uh, is a little bit uncomfortable. Fred Buckley last week came into the ball game first start against UCLA, played exceptionally well. They upset UCLA. He's a fifth-year senior, very talented, extremely highly regarded uh, out of high school as a quarterback. A lot of pressure's on him. As this offense goes, so will Fred Buckley, and he's so important to them. He doesn't have a lot of experience, but he's very talented. And what really makes a difference, Lindsay, in their offense is the fact that Brad Muster, number 25, is their running back. I don't think Stanford's ever had more of a commitment to the running game than they do this year. This young sophomore is going to be the best running back that's ever come out of Stanford. He is talented, a cutter, and a slasher, and makes Stanford a totally different team. And that's just about it. Washington at Stanford. We'll be back with the opening kickoff in just a moment. Number eight for Stanford. And deployed back there is Hill. Anzel Hill and Tim Peoples to receive the kickoff for the Washington Huskies. Sorgan, the referee, and the ball is in the air. It's over to Peoples side of the field. He takes it and will not run that touchback. First and ten at the 20. Let's look at the Washington offense now. On offense, Hugh Millen is the quarterback. Tailback is Jacques Robinson from San Jose. Rick Finney is the fullback. Mark Patterson is a split in. Danny Green is a flanker. And Tony Roden is the tight end. Here come the Huskies. Hugh Millen, their quarterback. Robinson and Feeney are the running backs. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. That's back on the first play. And over the middle, it is completed for a gain of about seven yards. Roden, the tight end, took it. The offensive line now, Dennis Mahar. There's that tackle. At guard, Al Robertson. At center, Dan Ernesty. At guard, Tim Burnham. And at tackle, Kevin Gogan. Second down, two yards to go. Put it on the ground to Finney. Looking for the first down, I think he got it. Let's look at the Stanford defensive line now. Garen Veras, a good one at tackle. 
Nose guard is Terry Jackson. And tackle Pat Mitchell. Outside linebacker is Tom Breel. Inside Matt Soderlund. Inside Dave Wyman. And outside Tom Prukop. First down and 10 yards to go just across the 30. Out of an eye formation. Pitch to the tailback. Jock Robinson. Stanford defensive backfield. Go ahead, Cook. Wyman, Dave Wyman, and Joe Kane. Joe Kane on the play. It's St. Jim. And Eric Price. Second down, about 11 yards to go. Madison and Green are wide. Mellon with the ball. In and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Jock Robinson. St. Jam was covering defensively. One of the things that Washington wants to accomplish in this first drive is to be able to control the football, get some confidence. They were a little bit rattled last week. Coaches really got on them. They really want performance more than anything else. March the ball. Don't make mistakes to put your defense in a hole. David Trimble in the ball game now for the Huskies. Third down play on long. Screen taken by Robinson. Jock Robinson gets it to the 35-yard line. And the hit was made. Dave Wyman of Reno, Nevada. Cut to 35. One of the things that happens when you get more aggressive in your defensive style is that they can now do plays just like this, the draw play, the screen play. You're aggressive on defense. They take advantage of that aggression, and they're able to run the little screen play to Jock Robinson, number 28. On fourth down, now, Thane Cleveland goes into deep punt formation. He's a sophomore with average 39.8. And Neil Harry is deep to receive it for Stanford, standing at his own 30-yard line. Leland gets it off. Harry at the 34-yard line, and that is where Stanford starts. First and 10 at their own 34-yard line. No score thus far. Red Buckley is the quarterback. Starting at the tailback today, Kevin Scott. Brad Muster is at fullback. He'll be playing that in tailback both. Emil Harry is a wide receiver. Jeff James is a wide receiver. Starting at the tight end today is Greg Beatty. First down, 10 yards to go. Stanford has the ball at their own 34. Buckley with a pitch. Taken by Kevin Scott. And drives up to the 38-yard line. Let's look at the Stanford offensive line now. Jeff Deaton is at tackle. Matt Moran is at guard. The center is Brent Martin. Right guard is Scott Carpenter. And the right tackle is John Barnes. Second down and seven yards to go. Buckley from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And right up the middle to the 44-yard line. Brad Muster carrying Washington, or rather the uh, Washington defensive line. Ron Holmes at tackle. Steve Alvord at guard, middle nose guard. And Tony Lewis at tackle. Reggie Rogers, outside linebacker. Tim Meamber, inside. Joe Kelly, inside. And Fred Small, outside linebacker. Third down and a yard to go for Stanford. This is Muster. Trying to pick up the first down, may have got it. He did, first and 10 for the Stanford Cardinal. Defensive backfield now for Washington. J.C. Pearson on the corner. Dusty Jackson on the corner as well. Jim Rogers at safety. And Tim Peebles at safety. First down and 10 yards to go. Ball is spotted just across the 45-yard line. There is no score. We're in the first quarter. 11 minutes, three seconds remaining to be played in this period. A beautiful sunny day in Palo Alto, California. Buckley. Incomplete at the 49. Trying to hit Kevin Scott crossing. 
Joe Kelly is covering. It's going to be second and ten. Washington, Washington's defense, more than anything else, try to force you to beat you. You've got to execute against them. They are so well coached, so disciplined in their efforts. You have got to really execute. They think they can over-execute you. They think they can do a better job. They're not going to make any mistakes. They want you to make the mistakes. Eric Snelson is coming at tight end. He's a freshman, and they are very high on him. for Big Brad Muster, and Muster is at the 35, 30, 25, 20, and Muster goes out of bounds at the 20-yard line of Washington. Forced out by Tim Peeble. 34-yard advance by Muster. Brad Muster really personifies the effort. It is a trap block right there. Carpenter makes the play. Brad breaks into the secondary. He's got excellent speed, 4, 5, 4, 6. This is something Stanford's not been able to do since Darren Nelson, and I really believe this young man's going to be a great player in the future. Fritz Stanford, an excellent field position. Now first and 10 at the Washington 20-yard line. Jeff James wide to the right side. Buckley waits for the snap. Ty counter to Scott. Kevin Scott to the 20-yard line. And now let's get an update by going back to New York. Lindsay, we told you SMU had the ball. We told you SMU had the ball. Here's what they did. Quarterback Don King, second and five. He replaced Lance McElhaney. He finds Ron Morris for a 27-yard touchdown as he tiptoes it in. SMU remains undefeated, 24 to 20. By the way, Lindsay, the Tigers won 4 to 2. Back to you. All right, Pat O'Brien. We're getting updated on all sorts of sports here, and the ball is at the 20-yard line in our game at Stanford Stadium. Buckley has it. Scampers a little and looks, puts it up and throws it away. Stanford has a shovel pass. Jeff James, number three, the wide receiver, came across like it was an underneath reverse play, and they have a shovel pass. Fred Buckley saw that he was not open, then he put the ball out of bounds safely. Third and ten at the 20-yard line. Ron Holmes is putting all that pressure on Fred Buckley. The real question of this ball game is if this offense can sustain drives against Washington and not put their defense in a compromising position. Buckley rolling and looking and throwing incomplete. Emil Harry, the man for is intended. Ron Holmes, number 90, is really a talented player. Let's watch him. There he is right there coming around this side. Watch him. They've got the quarterback on the roll, so all of a sudden the offensive linemen are able to push and shove and keep him out of the play. Last week, Lindsay, they really did Stanford a great job against UCLA when they were rushing. They kept moving the quarterback around, couldn't get a good shot at it. Mark Harmon trying a 37-yard field goal. He's perfect for the year. Six for six in the field goal department. It's up and good. He's still perfect. And Stanford takes the lead of 3-0. Nine minutes, 50 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter of this game at Stanford Stadium. <laughs> Lindsey Nelson with Steve Davis here at Stanford Stadium where the Stanford Cardinal is taking the 3-0 lead and Jack Elway faces the sidelines in his first year as head coach having replaced Paul Wigan. And Harmon will kick it off now. He has a Stanford record, 43 career field goals. Seven for seven so far this year. And deep. Anzel Hill and Tim Peoples back there for Washington. Over to Peoples' side. Eight yards deep. He will not run it out. Touchback. First and ten at the 20-yard line. So now the Washington Huskies get it once again. They won five games. They have lost none. Right, number two or number three nationally, according to which poll you're looking at. Lindsay, the greatest change in Stanford's football team, I believe, is their defense. They were so aggressive. Last year, they were kind of a read and react. Now they're an attack and read, and it really makes a difference in their play. Taken by Jacques Robinson, 210 pounder from San Jose. Sutherland made the tackle. Here's the final, and it is Nebraska over Missouri by 10 points. Michigan 
over Northwestern, 31 to nothing. Second down, six yards to go. Ball at the 24-yard line here. Washington in possession. And again, it's Jacques Robinson. Looking for the first down, has to get to the 30-yard line. Appears to be inches short. Prukoff made the tackle. Third down and much less than a yard to go. One of the things that Don James shared with us yesterday, he is so frustrated in the sense that he knows that Washington, now they're balanced, they're so much tougher to go uh, play against because they're balanced on defense and offense. He said they are a tougher team because they're aggressive. but he is hit just as he crossed the 30-yard line, but that's all he had to do to get the first down. Wyman made the tackle. Dave Wyman really is number 92, the lean reader. This time he steps into the hole. That's the difference. Last year it was kind of a read and react type style. That time you saw his first step, he went forward. He's locked, watching the ball carry, locking in, and then zeroes in for the tackle. First down and 10 yards to go now for the Washington Huskies. They have the ball at their own 31-yard line. Millen, short drop, deflected outside, incomplete. It was Garen Barrens who got a hand on it. Six, and, six feet, six inches tall, 250 pounder, Chillicothe, Ohio. Hugh Millen really is a young quarterback. He's 19 years old. He was 16 years old when he graduated from high school, spent two years in junior college. So he's got, he's really an inexperienced player, but he's talented. I think he's putting on too much pressure on himself, trying to make too many things happen. He's two for four in the air, 14 yards so far in this game. Out of an eye formation. Millen, over the middle, complete. Just across the 35-yard line, taken by Danny Green. Here's the receivers. The assignment of the quarterback is he's looking at all, he's keying, he's looking deep and coming forward. This time, receiver across the middle, Danny Green right there in front of those linebackers. These linebackers have good speed, they're dropping good distances so the receiver can come underneath them and make that five, six, seven yard reception. Third and five at the 36. Millen Troy, and complete. Taking across the 45 to the 50, and across the 40. 35 and out of bounds at the 30 yard line, Tony Roden. Tony Roden makes it a first and ten Washington deep in Stanford territory. Tony Roden, the tight end, has had some knee problems. He doesn't show it this time. Watch a confident Hugh Millen drop back. This will do more for your confidence than anything else. Catch the tight end across the middle. Watch Tony go down the sideline. Finally knocked out by Joe Kane. A pickup of 34 yards on the play makes it a first and ten for the Washington Huskies at the Stanford 30-yard line. We have seven minutes, 29 seconds remaining of the first quarter, and Stanford's leading by a score of three nothing. Hell, up until we can get the change reset here. And the referee as well wants to retrieve a flag that was left downfield. A little housekeeping taking place here at Stanford Stadium. We'll be set to go any minute now. Hi. <laughs> There was declined, so it is first and ten at the 30-yard line. Double receivers to the right side. Madison and Green over there. It is Robinson, Jock Robinson. Forced out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Got five on the play to make it second and five. Troy Crook made the stop. Jock Robinson really has had an up and down career in Washington. The coaches describe him as an underachiever. He can really be as good as he wants to be. He's got good speed, it's deceptive speed, but he can be really as talented as he wants to be. And it's just a matter of if he's in, in cycle and ready to go practice. Don James rewards practice players. Ricky Jackson in there now. Making a 
handoff to Rick Finney, the fullback, the drive to the vicinity of the 20-yard line, and maybe inside. Second effort might have got a yard or two. Prukop made the stop. This is a base play. All it is is you just got to go block people. It's kind of a counter base, and there it is right in. They just pinch in. Joe Kane, number seven, making the tackle there on Rick Finney. First down at 10 yards to go for Washington. They have the ball at the Stanford 19-yard line. Jackson and Finney are the running backs in an eye formation. Danny Green is set on the slot left. Patterson's outside, four left. Tricky Jackson. Got it most a yard. Matt Sutherland from Boise, Idaho, made the tackle. And it's no game. Make it second and 10 at the 19. Stanford coming into the football game wanted to take the primary play away from Washington, which is the sweet play. If they could take the, that away, they wanted to see if Hugh Millen could take on all the pressure of this offense and have to go throw the football. They've done a pretty good job on the sweet play. Green to the right side, Patterson to the left side. Jock Robinson back in the ball again. Jock Robinson. found a little daylight and sprinted up the sideline and went out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. One of the problems Jock Robinson has had in his career is he's been reluctant to turn up field. This time, he doesn't have a problem. Watch him. He keeps the shoulder parallel line of scrimmage. Now he's going to go to the sideline, watch him square the shoulders, and try to get up field. More yardage, more effort. Good running, good effort by Jock Robinson, the senior. He's carried six times for 25 yards, and they're going to bring the chain across to measure to see if he got a first down at the nine. They'll have to bring the chain all the way across the field to measure for the possible first down with five minutes, 54 seconds left to play in the first quarter. First down and goal to go for the Washington Huskies. And they have the ball at the nine-yard line off the Stanford Cardinal. Drew <laughs> Mellon, who went to high school in Seattle, then to junior college, then his red shirt of the year. Back to Jacques Robinson and Rick Finney. <laughs> Or Millen, the quarterback. 55! Robinson. Looking to cut back, but can't. Cut off at the pass. And it's Dave Wyman at the 10-yard line for a loss of a yard second and goal. The way you stop the sweep play is you've got to have your outside or your perimeter people force the play back inside where all those red shirts are. That time, Eric Price, number 27, did an excellent job of forcing it back inside. That's the Stanford Cardinal defense, what they did last week. They literally, in the first half, dominated UCLA. Made them play, uh, make some mistakes. Split the backs this time. On a second down and goal to go. Incomplete. And the loss of that to Mark Patterson. It'll be third and goal at the 10-yard line. They played together in high school, Madden and Patterson. Funny story, Patterson was a starting quarterback in high school when uh, young Hugh Millen was there, and, 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 and really Mark never thought highly of Hugh Millen as far as a quarterback, and he was an average quarterback, admittedly. And when Patterson was on the field at Washington and Hugh Millen came on, walked on, Patterson was the one that was most shocked because he was really a talented young quarterback. The third down play is coming now. And the officials want another football. Probably had a Stanford football. There, you know, you can have your own football. Yes, you can. In any case, we have another ball. The ball has been marked ready for play. Third down and goal to go at the 10-yard line. Stanford is leading 3-0. Washington in possession here. Green is far to the left side. He's number 80. Touchdown. Patterson. Hugh Millen to Mark Patterson, Indians, on for a 10-yard touchdown. Jeff Jager will 
attempt a conversion now. He is 13 of 14 in that department, and Chris Chandler will hold for him. Drive was 13 plays, 80 yards, and it consumed four minutes and 46 seconds. Digger's kick is good. And so as they come back up the field, the Washington Huskies have taken the lead. This will do more for a person's, a young quarterback's confidence than anything. Hugh looks off the defensive secondaries away, then he goes to Mark Patterson right in the end zone. Good play. It's 7-3. Didn't throw too many touchdown passes at Oklahoma. Well, watch Hugh, Hugh Millen look off the secondary and watch his reaction. Gets a little hit. It doesn't hurt to get knocked on the dirt when you know you've got a touchdown. Oh, how wonderful it is. <laughs> That's what they had, and now it'll be Washington kicking off, and Jeff Jager will kick it off. Sean Avant has dropped back with Kevin Scott to receive it. Kevin Scott, first in the Pac-10 in kickoff returns and fifth in the nation. Had one for 89 yards against UCLA. He's number 24. Five minutes, four seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter. Jagger's ready. Scott at the seven. Drops it to the ten. Drops it again across the 15 and at the 17. Near the conclusion of today's CBS Sports College football broadcast, Steve Davis and I will be selecting a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each of these teams. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. If Hugh Millen will develop, gain his confidence, and this offense will gain confidence around him, then again, Lindsay, I have to emphasize the point I made at the very beginning. Washington is in an ideal position to win a national championship. Everything's working in their favor. First and 10 at the 17. Muster and Scott are the setbacks. Muster carry. Washington came into this football game wanting to force Stanford, believe it, of all things, Stanford to throw the football. They feel like that this balanced attack, spreading the defense, stretching it out, really is a is tough on this defense of Washington. So they want to try to take away the running play and force them to have to go throw the ball. Put the pressure on quarterback Fred Buckley. Muster has carried four times for 46 yards. It is second down and seven yards to go, and the ball is at the 30. Buckley. His receiver is down. It's incomplete. It was Emil Harry for whom it was intended, but he was on the turf. J.C. Pearson was covering defensively on the corner. Third and seven at the 30-yard line. Final score, Minnesota 17, Wisconsin 14. Oh, -ho, Lou Holt. <laughs> That's a great victory for Lou Holt. It is indeed. That's one of those backyard battles, Minnesota and Wisconsin. That, you mean they don't like each other? They don't like each other. I love <laughs> Let's see, that makes, uh, that makes Minnesota 3-3 three and three on the year. Buckley in the air has gone 0 for 4 so far. So I dropped looking. Well, there was a flag thrown on contact. Scott was the intended receiver up near the 40. And Tim Peebles was a defender. Tim Peoples just showed one of the problems that he has. We'll get the call. Pass and interference. Hurts. That's right. Tim Peoples is such, number 26, is such a talented athlete. He's so aggressive. He's got a lot of balance. He is sometimes overly aggressive. And that time he was overly aggressive. He caught the receiver a little prematurely before the ball was there, and it cost him. Interference and under this year's collegiate rules, of course, from the previous spot. And it moves it up to the 35-yard line. First and ten. Scott and Muster are the setbacks. Muster in motion outside left. And it's picked off at the 38-yard line by Joe Kelly. And Kelly runs it in for a touchdown. A Washington touchdown for linebacker Joe Kelly of Los Angeles, California.
Fred Buckley as a quarterback is reading from the deep part of the secondary back inside. So he's trying to go across. And there was Joe Kelly right in between he and the receiver. And you just can't throw the ball to Joe Kelly because he is extremely fast, the best balance of run pass linebacker that Washington has. It's recorded as a 40-yard run back of the interception and the touchdown for Kelly and Jagers into attempted conversion. Chandler holding for it. And it's good. And so the Washington Huskies have gone ahead in the football game by a score of four to three. Interception this season and ran it back 40 yards for the touchdown that puts Washington out in front by a score of 14 to three. And keep in mind, these Huskies come in with a record of five wins and no losses. Jagger's gonna kick it off now from the 40-yard line. Deep are Avant and Scott. Scott is waiting. Scott at the 8-yard line to the 10, to the 15, to the 20. Scott out to the 30 and across. Well, they'll start first and 10 across the 30-yard line. A reminder, there's an NFL doubleheader tomorrow on CBS Sports. In the first game, you'll see the Los Angeles Rams in New Orleans against the Saints or the Chicago Bears against the St. Louis Cardinals. And in the second game, that's where you'll see Dallas and Washington battle for first place in the NFC East. It all starts for the NFL today, tomorrow on CBS Sports. Check your local listings. Washington, Dallas, and they don't like each other. <laughs> Right to the outside, taken by Brad Muster, 25. Up to the 34-yard line, Joe Kelly made the tackle. Penalty marker on the play. Illegal use of hands against the offensive team, which is Stanford. Try to stretch out the play, you try to contain those defensive linemen in their rush. You grab hold, you use your hands a little bit too much, and that's what happened. Fred Buckley is 0 and 5 and with one interception. So he's struggling, senior. Illegal use of the hands, offense, still first down. So the penalty has been inflicted. First down and 14 yards to go. Buckley looking, scrambles. Picks his way up to the 40 yard line. Looks to be about a yard short of the sticks. Holmes made the tackle. Let's get an update on Army replicas with uh, Pat O'Brien. Okay, Lindsey, Rutgers has scored on this play. Quarterback Eric Hochberg pitches out to Dwayne Hooper. It's a 12-yard touchdown. Rutgers pulls ahead of Army 14-7. Let's go back to Lindsey and Steve. All right, Pat O'Brien, here it is second down and about a yard to go, and the ball's on the 39-yard line. Stanford with the ball in their possession and their territory. Scott Muster on setback. Jeff James coming across in motion. And it's Muster. He got the first and ten. Stanford stays alive with the drive at the 44. Right now, Jack Elway in his play calling and selection seems to be really trying to calm down Fred Buckley. He threw the interception, rattled him a little bit. They had come right back out and, and play football. So now try to use that running great game. Don't be a force the issue. Just be patient. First down now. Alabama and Penn State still scoreless. That is Muster. Bad Muster to the 48 yard line. Washington leading here by a score of 14 to 3. We have two minutes, 10 seconds left to play in the first quarter. There are the numbers on Muster. Nelson's in the ballgame now tied in. Freshman. 
James and Harry at the wide right, the receiver. Nelson moves over to right. Buster in the left set. Scott gets the pitch. He gets pulled down by Fred Small from Los Angeles. Watch Fred Small this time. He takes on the blocker. Watch him use his hands, his upper body strength, and just get rid of the blocker. Boom. There he goes, and there he's able to make the tackle. That's Bulldog. Uh, that's back in Oklahoma. You can do that. That's legal in Oklahoma. <laughs> Third down. That's seven yards to go with the ball back at the 47-yard line now. There he goes out to the left side. James comes out to the right side. Boy, Fred Buckley. Upgrade on Illinois, Ohio State with Pat O'Brien. Lindsay Jackson Go is taking the Buckeyes apart in the air. Here he looks to the back of the end zone for the nation's leading receiver, David Williams. Illinois leads 17 0. Let's go back to Lindsay and Steve. I don't know, Steve. You don't do that in Columbus, do you? No, Illinois came into the ballgame 4 and 2 on the year, Ohio State 4 and 1. And if Ohio State takes a dunk, then the Washington point of winning a national championship is even further enhanced. Doug Robinson's back in deep punt formation, and Ron Miles is back to receive it. We know run back. It's going to go out of bounds, and it's at the 26-yard line. Jim Rogers was the man who got very close to blocking that punt. 27-yard kick is all it is. Tomorrow on the NFL Today, Irv Cross will take an inside look with a profile on Dallas's Danny White, and that's an interesting story. I, I, I want to see it because I know the, the Hogaboom situation has been so talked about, but in Dallas, I was in Dallas last week, Lindsay, and it's they're still, the smoke has not cleared yet on that debate. Well, we'll get more information tomorrow from Irv when he talks to him. Dive just across the 30-yard line. Rick Finney. We have 33 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter. Ball is at the 30-yard line. Second down and six. Picked up four on that last completed pass to the fullback. Ian and Patterson. Our wide receivers. Rick Finney up to the 35-yard line. Crook up, made the tackle. Time counting down on the first period. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. We'll return after this commercial break and a word from your local station. They talk about our position here. You sit on a chair. I have to get up where I can move around and attack this monitor. They needed a yard for the first down. Line of scrimmage was the 35, and Millen kept it himself, just trying to force the yard. <laughs> the first quarter stats, uh, Washington really, in their last couple of drives, dominated the big long drive for the, the last touchdown, the first touchdown of the ball game. Time of possession closed. The turnover, obviously, that turned the seven points, and that was crucial in the first quarter. And Millen did not get the first down, and so it is fourth, and that's just the punting unit has come onto the field. Emil Harry has dropped back to receive it for Stanford, and Thane Cleland is the punter. Lake Oswego, Oregon. Cleland's punted once for 30 yards. High trajectory way back. Harry retreating. Emil Harry takes it at the 12 yard line. The 15. And it'll be about the 16, and there'll be a penalty marker there to check out. David Toy was the man there, but there is a marker, a 53-yard punt. The officials target over. Clipping on the run back against Stanford. I think Mark Andrew, number 93, the outs one of the linebackers, uh, he's kind of the fourth linebacker of this football team. I think he was the uh, culprit on the play. Don James along the sideline there with a the headset on and the cap. 
the head coach at Washington. This is his 10th year. He played his college football at the University of Miami, Florida. Clipping by the return team. Half the distance. First down. Burl Sorgan, the referee. First and 10 at the 8-yard line. I would not anticipate a pass. I would think not. I think they'll probably want to stay very conservative. But the zero and six attempts. Scott and Muster are the setback. They give it to Muster. He gets to the 11-yard line. Picked up three. Let's check out some scores. Here we are in the first quarter. Texas seven and Oklahoma nothing. In Dallas, Texas. I could, I could care less. <laughs> I really could. <laughs> <laughs> in the first quarter, BYU 14 and Wyoming 7. Alabama, Penn State still no score. And then the third quarter, Illinois 17, Ohio State nothing in the second quarter. Right here, the Huskies 14 and Stanford 3 in the second quarter. Kentucky was undefeated. They're getting beat. Scott. Fumble the ball and the scramble is on. It is at about the 14-yard line, and uh, it has gone over. Dusty Jackson gets the football for Washington, number 27, and there he is. Jackson recovered it, and so it's going to be excellent field position, the second turnover for Stanford. Let's see what happened. Kevin Scott, number 24, trying to make yards, feeling the pressure. Right there, I don't, can't see the player, but it was an effort. The ball was close to his body. Someone got their hand in there and stripped him of the ball. Mr. Jackson's became the lucky recipient of the football. First and 10 at the 15-yard line. Walt Hunt is in there with Cookie Jackson now at the setbacks. Cookie Jackson. Can't turn that corner because Toy Cook is there. Let's get another update now from Pat O'Brien in New York. Okay, Lindsey, Jack Trudeau continues his assault on the Buckeyes. Here he hits tight end Cap Boso. Embarrassing the Buckeyes, 24 to nothing in Columbus. Let's go back to Lindsay. <laughs> the Illini are running wild in Columbus, Ohio. Second down, 10 yards to go at the 15. 47. 47. Big hole there. Walt Hunt. Just kept right on driving. Jim was the man there defensively. And it's going to be marked at the three yard line. The ground cannot cause the fumble. That's what happened. It popped, popped loose. Good call by the official. First and goal at the three yard line for Washington. 239. 39. Taken by Cookie Jackson. Down to about the two yard line. Prukop made the tackle. At the beginning of the season, there were two real question marks about the offensive team. Quarterback, who it would be, and the offensive line. Mayher, Robertson, Ernesty, Burnham, Gogan were all suspect. They're not as good as they need to be right now. Here's the play. Good contact. Too many red shirts being able to penetrate and make the play. Hunt and Robinson are the backs now. Second down and goal to go inside the three. Hunt. About the one yard line. Talking about the offensive line, they only had two returning lettermen starters, Mayher, the left tackle, and Ernesty, the center. Let's watch the line, sir. You've got to be able to put that, you've got to attack that defensive line. You've got to move bodies. Look at the surge. There they are, the double team. Fullback. Just not able. Ernesty was not able to control, control that nose man, Terry Jackson. That's why the play didn't quite get the end zone. Robinson and Finney are the setbacks. Robinson, touchdown. Jock Robinson took it in. J. 
Jock Robinson squares his shoulders up the line of scrimmage and goes off the fullback, breaks the play outside off his fullback's block and able to push into the end zone for the touchdown. Only had to go 15 yards for the drive and for the touchdown. Supporters of the Washington Huskies, of course, knew that uh, they would have some problem with the offensive line, and they were hopeful that as the season progressed, that it would get better and better and better, and that's about what it's done. We'll have the conversion attempt now. Jacob boots it up, and it's good to make the score. The Huskies, 21, and Stanford, 3. I have a 15 yards on five plays, two minutes, 31 seconds consumed. Here again the play. Watch the fullback play inside. Finney makes the block, and then outside he goes for the touchdown. It's 21-3. We'll be back. For 19 yards and no losses, it's taken a commanding lead of 21-3 here. We're in the second quarter, 11-12 to be played in this period, and Jake is going to kick it off. The deep man, uh, Kevin Scott. And Avant, Avant is in there because Tom Henley is injured. Avant returning. Scamble is on. Up at about the 25-yard line. Exciting the crowd. Washington says they retrieved it. The official still determining. No, they did not. Stanford retains possession. Stanford Stadium. It is not the Stanford football team that is carrying this ball loosely. It is the contact of Washington. Watch the contact of the play. That's Tim Peoples making that stick. And there the ball pops loose. You make the decision. But Washington is intimidating by the style of play. They just come at you and hit you. Those guys are mean. The word is that Kurt Josephson got the football, and it's going to be first and 10 now at the 24-yard line for Stanford. Scott Muster running back for Buckley. Completed. Out to the 29, I think, where it'll be marked to Kevin Scott. J.C. Pearson made the hit. We were talking to Don James yesterday about his defensive style a little bit, and uh, it it really was uh, interesting. And we were talking about where he's where he got it, and really Jim Owens is the one that uh, that was a uh, Washington coach. Jim Owens was on Bear Bryant's staff at Texas A&M, wasn't it? He was indeed, and uh, got that kind of style of play, and that's the kind of style that Don James has come grown accustomed to. And they are have a lot of pride in their purple game. Talk to you again. Well, he's going to run, but not far. Out to the 27th, Steve Alvor made the tackle. Don James was on the staff at Colorado back in 1968, and he was a little too aggressive with his, with his defensive style. Coaches like Johnny Majors, who was at Iowa State that year, and Pepper Rogers was at Kansas, they got a little frustrated. They had a big Big 8 meeting and said, hey, listen, Colorado, he was on the staff of Eddie Crowder, he said, you're playing a little too tough. He was actually a little bit ahead of his day because that's the standard defensive play today. Third down conversions there, are one for three. It is third down and six yards to go. Getting a timeout, charge to Stanford. And so, with the Huskies leading 21 to 3, we have a timeout. James' his defensive style. I asked him the question about his style coaching the defense, and this is what he had to say. Well, when I got there, all I could hear about was the Purple Gang, and uh, you know that was a, a, a great tradition that, that started years ago. Of course, Jim Owens had the uh, the outstanding teams in the early '60s, the three Rose Bowl teams, and the, so we, you know, I, I think it's traditional. But uh, if you play a college Division One A football, you, you line up and you better be tough, and you know you're going to hit. Uh, or you probably wouldn't be at this level. Third down and six yards to go at the 28. Buckley. Scott and incomplete. Kevin Scott for whom it was intended. Joe Kelly covering defensively. Fourth down. You really can't blame Fred Buckley on that pass. He hit Kevin Scott right where it had to be, chest high, right where he could catch the football, and he just dropped the ball, unfortunately. Watch Kevin Scott, number 24, out of the backfield, right where it had to be, perfectly thrown. He just couldn't hang on to it. Doug Roberson's back in deep hunt formation, and Ron Miles has dropped back to his favorite. One kick of 28 yards previously today by Roberson. Into a 
Well, she got it off. Alice at the 35, and Skidder's up to the 40, 45. How he got through there, I don't know, but he did. It's gonna be marked about the 47. 21 to three. Well, Michigan at Iowa or UCLA at California. Check your local listing. Oh, oh gadget. Ah, the old flea flicker. And look out there. Nobody there. Danny Green was out there like a center fielder all along. Tumbled at the four-yard line. Bill Miller. To Jackson. Back to Miller. 48 yards down to Green. You can tell when Don James is feeling better about his offense because watch Cookie Jackson right back to Hugh Millen. And Hugh wants to lay it in so perfectly. That's probably the problem. Didn't stretch out a receiver as much as he should have. Trying to fall back over his shoulder a little bit. Well, it was thrown right where it had to be. Just couldn't stand up on his feet. First and goal at the four-yard line. Then he had Jackson on the setback. Cookie Jackson. Stop at the five. Second down and goal to go. College football on CBS next week is a doubleheader. Two games. Michigan, Iowa, then uh, followed by the second game, the California game. Cal, UCLA. All those teams are three and two except Cal, and they're two and three. Benny and Jacques Robinson the setbacks now. Incomplete, bounced it. Third down. Jock Robinson, the man for whom it's intended. The helmets are a little locked up there. <laughs> it's rather a compromising position in front of 55,000 people. <laughs> Third down. And goal to go at the five. Hugh Millen, the quarterback, 7 for 11. Green is part of the right side, number 80. 35. 35. Millen rolling and looking and keeping. Trying to make the dive. But the flag is down. So they check out the penalty. That is Millen. I think he got a pretty good shot on his thigh. It's very painful. Probably a, a helmet. Illegal use of the hands. Offense. Still third down. But the ball is moved back to the 14-yard line. Third and goal at the 14. You've got to, if you're Don James, you've got to be more comfortable now that your quarterback's playing well. This time he tucks the ball under his arm. He does the right thing. He doesn't want to waste the pass. Let's see what happens where he gets hit. A couple of shots there that could have uh, been rather painful. Washington has taken a timeout. Eight minutes, 22 seconds left to play in the half. Passing yardage, Washington 116, Stanford 5. Hill and Green are in there at the wide receivers. And the ball is loose. And it's recovered by Washington. They retain possession. Terry Jackson was the man in there for Stanford. Back to the 25-yard line. This is one of the things that Hugh Millen must improve on. He has a tendency to hold the ball too long. Terry Jackson will force him out of the pocket right there. He's making sure that receiver's breaking. You've got to throw before the break, and Jackson forces the fumble, and they were able to, Rick Finney, to fall on it and maintain possession. Jagger's going to attempt a field goal now. It'll be a 42-yarder. He had a 47 earlier this year. 42-yard field goal attempt by Jagger is good. Three more points for the Washington Huskies. So Jager, who had four last week against Oregon State, boots the long win here to make it 24 to three. 
Well, it got to be a sign of confidence for the Washington offensive coaches to know that last week, Oregon State game, when they did not play well, had mistakes, turnovers, did not sustain a drive. They've got to feel like that that was just a bad game experience and that they are really improving on a week-to-week -week basis. Hugh Millen is playing more confidently. I think they've got to be improved and excited about the ability of the offense now to complement that great defensive football team. Let's clear up now what's coming up next week for the college football doubleheader on CBS. Next week, be sure to tune it in. It's coverage of college football with Michigan at Iowa and UCLA at California. Doubleheader. So check your local list. Well, Lots the, of football. The Big Ten's going to turn into a real race if Ohio State gets dumped uh, this today. They're well on the way. And they're well, <laughs> you think they've got a better than uh, got a 50 chance? Got a good chance. <laughs> Jagger's going to kick it off in the 40-yard line. Scott Nevada deep. Scott. Five, ten. Cross the 12 and down. Bo Yates made the tackle. Jack Elway, the head coach of Stanford. This is his first year here. The concerns are for Jack Elway is that they've just got such bad field position. They can't feel like it, but they can go and throw the football confidently. And I think probably he's a little bit concerned about Fred Buckley through the interception. And he's got to be concerned about what can we do to get some offense. Their running game is getting stymied a little bit by Washington. They're going to have to go to the air eventually. Buckley has one for eight, five yards, and one interception. That may be another factor yeah. one for eight. Must have carried. They are without the services of Thomas Henley today, a running back. Alabama has taken a three-point lead now in the fourth quarter over Penn State. 24-0, Illinois over Ohio State. It's hard to believe Alabama came in that game one and four. Here's a final Florida, 43, Tennessee, 30. Lots of points. Galen Hall, my old coach at Oklahoma, head coach down in Florida. Yeah. Kentucky, Mississippi State, 10-10 tie in the third. Buckley moves Scott over. And Buckley. Deflected from Snelson and intercepted at the 22-yard line. It's Washington's ball. Kelly's got it. Great defenses will do a lot of things to embarrass you offensively. Right now, they're really controlling Stanford. They're doing everything they want to. They force three turnovers. And as I said earlier, Washington is a defensive football team that will force you to execute. They don't believe you can out-execute them. They're going to make you work for everything you get. This time, just control right across Snelson. The ball was thrown too hard. It hit Snelson off his hands and the interception. Joe Kelly with his second interception of the day. First and 10 at the 22-yard line. Cookie Jackson to the 21. Iowa 26, Purdue three in the third quarter. Oh. I was four and one going into that ball game. Hayden Fry. They had a good shot at winning the conference. BYU 14, Wyoming seven in the second quarter. Second and nine at 21. Jackson and Hunt. Nolan throwing and completing out in the left left. Taken out there by Hunt. He's inside the 10-yard line. That'll be a first and goal. Kane with Prokop made the tackle. 12-yard pickup on the play. That time the Stanford's defense broke down. There was no one covering Walt Hunt out of the backfield. Prokop, number 52, the outside linebacker, had to chase him, but someone busted, and that's why you have a big play on offense. And, of course, that wasn't a big, big play, but you had a big game. First and goal at the nine, and that's not bad. Going to overdo this. Millen calls time. The quarterback turned and called time. Well, let's take a look now at Stanford and Washington's campuses. Washington 24, Stanford 3. And the ball is at the nine-yard line, where it'll be first down and goal to go. First down, guys. Get ready. Here we go. Jack Elway with the headset. 
Drew Millen brings them up. Jackson and Hunt are the setbacks. Leave it inside to Hunt. To the eight yard line. Second and go. Moronic made the tackle. Let's look and see what the linebackers are doing. Washington now feels more comfortable. They're going inside. Let's test the two linebackers, Soderlin and Wyman, taking on the buck and aggressively going forward. They're a lot better play at doing things a lot more, uh, I think, in line with what college football is going on, what they're doing today. More aggressive on defense. Green in motion back to the inside. Ellen rolling and looking. Incomplete. Got to get it to Rod Jones. Third down and goal to go. Outside the eight. Linebackers have two real phases of the game. They've got to be concerned about the run, but they've also, also got to be very concerned about the pass. Let's see it this time. They've got to drop. Let's watch the two linebackers. Same two. They read the play. It's going to be a pass. Drop, 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 drop. Get back in those areas. And then go for the ball. Go to the area. Keep those, they gotta get those eyes moving around left and right, see what's coming out there in their area. Nolan is eight for 13, 128 yards and one touchdown. Leave this one to Jackson. Jackson to the four yard line. Sutherland and Barris made the stop. Fourth down coming up. Miss Jager coming in. Chandler coming in the hole. Twenty-two yard attempt. Ernest he makes the snap. It's good. Another for Jagger. Three more points for the Washington Huskies who go ahead by a score of twenty-seven to three. So the Washington Huskies, who were hoping for a fine performance against Stanford and on television in view of the fact that they're 5-0, and are having one. You cannot make mistakes against a football team that has such a great defense. You just can't turn the ball over and especially put your offense in a, in a, in a tough area, your defense in a tough area. Every time miscue, touchdown, fumble, touchdown, interception, field goal, Stanford has really struggled. They are the 10th ranked team in the in the Pac-10 in total defense, but on film, they have not shown that. They've been very aggressive, they've had people in the right places, and they've been able to make up the mistakes with their offense. Today, their offense is making mistakes and putting their defense in a hole, and they just can't recover. Jeff Jager back there to kick it off, and that is Kevin Scott and Sean Avant deep to receive it. High trajectory. Goes across the end line, all the way across the end line. So it'll be brought out and put in play at the 30-yard line. Got a little bit of wind pushing the ball. That's a bad rule. It'll be it'll be gone in 1985. Buckley in the air is one for nine, five yards and two interceptions. That may be one reason why they're not throwing anymore. That's a good reason. You think so? <laughs> I do. Well, you've got to realize he's been on the program for five years, but he has only played, started last week for the first time, so he's he's relatively a rookie. He is a rookie. Buster. Boy, I like the way he plays football. I know you do. It's up to the 42-yard line. Red Small made the tackle. Well, you've got to admit, Lindsey, Stanford running the football is like the off-speed pitch in baseball. I mean, you know, they're not known for, you know, for, you know, running the ball. But he really has some talent. There's Stanford's last five possessions. When any time you've got a bunch of threes in the play column, you're in trouble. You cannot afford three plays and punt or three plays and interception or whatever it is. It's just not a, a winning combination. And it, it has hurt them. Tremendously in this first half. Must have scared 10 times for 75 yards. As he throws and it's intercepted. And we turn to midfield. So Washington gets the ball at midfield. With three minutes, 56 seconds left to play in the half. 
There's a penalty marker to be checked out back near the line of scrimmage. So holding. Holding. Against the offense, decline because Washington wants the ball. Wisely, they get it. Let's see if we can find who the culprit is in the holding department for Stanford. Let's see if it's the center. Well, not too bad. Well, let's see. I don't know. It may not have been the center. You can extend those hands, and you can kind of play around with the jersey a little bit. It's when you get those hands outside of the block, the upper part of the body where you start pushing and grabbing and jockeying that uh, defensive player around that's the problem. First and 10 just across the 50. Umella. Waited just over the middle at the 44-yard line. Taken by Rod Jones. Hit by Wyman. Yeah, and about five or six on the play. Rod Jones, the tight end, number 84. Watch him outside release. Nice, deceptive. Come right underneath the linebackers. Ball right where it had to be. Make the tackle. Second down play. And about a half yard. Feeney, the fullback carry. We've been talking about Hugh Millen and the offense uh, performing and doing well. They've really not had that much trouble really performing. Their last three drives started at the Stanford 15, their own 48, and the Stanford 22, and it resulted in 10 points. So they've not had to go a long way for scores. Third down and five yards to go outside the 43. Green and Hill, the wide receivers. No, he was across the sideline incomplete. Danny Green. That'll bring up a fourth down. And will bring on the punter, Dane Cleland. Emile Harry drops back to receive it. Two minutes, 44 seconds left to play in the first half. Previous punts of 30 and 53 for Cleveland. Cleveland's kick. Fair catch signal for Harry. Makes it at the 10 yard line. 33 yard punt. So Stanford starts first and 10 at their own 10 yard line. Don James is truly a coach's coach because he believes in the three phases of the game, offense, defense, and kicking game. They spend equal amount of time, 33% with each phase of the game. That time, they put the pressure on Harry. He had to catch the ball because defensive players were all around. Don't you dare let it hit the ground because it's going to stop at the one or two. So he had to catch the fair catch the ball. That's the Don James style of play. Double receivers to the left side, James and Harry. Red send it across the 15 with Brad Muster carry. Second down and five yards to go. Washington tried to recruit Brad Muster. They really like him. In fact, the coaches yesterday said, he's scary. We know what this kid's like. They fell in love with his parents when they were recruiting him. They wanted him to come to Washington, and so they know the talent of this young man. He reminds me of Steve Owens, the cutting, slashing. He's got a lot more speed than Owens had in 69, but he represents a, that type of back, and he really has some talent. Buckley brings them up, second down, and five yards to go. Buckley. Could not get back to the line of scrimmage. Coming up at halftime, college football report. Pat O'Brien and Eric Parsegian with scores and highlights, and uh, they'll bring you up to date on some of those we've been showing you and others. And there have been some very interesting things happening in college football today. As we said at the beginning of the show, there's not a team that's a dominant team in college football. I don't think Texas is going to be a dominant team. They've got a tough schedule yet to go. I don't think anyone in the top five are dominating, uh, have a dominating style of play. So it really will be a race to the finish for the championship. Third and six at the 14. Buckley. Going long to Harry, and Emil Harry has it at the 30-yard line. Pearson made the tackle. First down and 10 yards to go, Stanford at the Washington 30. 
you've got to admire the, the confidence of Buckley when he's really not played well at all. I think he thought about running. He really thought about putting his arm, and then he looks one more time at Emil Harry, number 10, breaking deep across the middle, working on J.C. Pearson, makes the catch. That can be a confidence builder. You've got to know. Watch it, what happens. Now, all this time, Buckley is having to move around. He's thinking about maybe running the ball. Slows down. Now he breaks on. Should have never slowed down. Keep running. Keep pushing. 54 yards on the play. First and 10 at the 30. McLean. Trying to hit Muster. Incomplete. People's covering. Illinois 24, Ohio State 14 now. Two quick TDs. That's in the second quarter. We have 40 seconds remaining to be played in the first half. Stanford trying to get on the scoreboard with Washington leading 27 to 3. Oftentimes when you've had mistakes, you've not thrown the ball well, you've not completed too many passes, you have a tendency to get a little bit tentative in your style when you're on the field throwing the ball. Fred Buckley, he's come right back, try to throw another pass. Buckley again. Can't get rid of this one. Lots of travel. Joe Kelly was the first man there. He's dropped back at the 38-yard line. Ron Hadley there as well. Stanford offensive line last week against UCLA really did an outstanding job of keeping UCLA away from Fred Buckley, the quarterback. It seemed like when uh, it was an obvious passing situation where you were going to get a three, four, five-man rush, then they would roll the quarterback out and protect him. But that time, uh, Washington was tenacious enough and were able to get to Buckley and stop him. Timeout Stanford. The clock showing 33 seconds remaining to be played in the half. And it will be third down and 18 yards to go. Stanford at the Washington 38-yard line. Well, you're looking at Jack Elway. There's got to be some anxiety there because I know coming into the ball game, he really felt like the team had prepared for this encounter. He thought they were going to make a better showing in the first half. Obviously, he thought they could keep it close and probably take them the distance and maybe win it in the fourth quarter. He's got to be disappointed. He's got to go realign his game plan now in the second half. He's going to have to throw the ball, something that uh, they really don't want to do all that much. They don't want to be predictable. They don't want to have to go pass every down, which Washington can tee off on and keep. Fred Buckley brings them up. James and Harry are the wide receivers. The screen right and it's incomplete. Scott over there. That'll bring up fourth down. 29 seconds left to play in the half. Fred Small, number five, was the outside linebacker. Uh, Fred decided he would go join uh, Fred Buckley for a little conversation, so he, should, uh, he caused him to rush his pass. And here is a timeout signal. Stanford takes the timeout. And they have none remaining. That's their last. Shouldn't need another with 29 seconds remaining in the half. <laughs> Emil Harry has joined Ken Marjoram, Darren Nelson, and Tony Hill as the only receivers over 2,000 yards in Stanford history. Harry now has 2,044. So that's pretty select company. drill van along the sideline here. <laughs> yeah, we've seen their action. <laughs> I want to get Rice and Stanford bands together. I think that would be great. Just let the bands play in the first, second, third, and fourth quarters and let the teams play at half sometimes. The band is really something. As a recruit here, uh, they're going to work out. <laughs> Starts on the snap with 29 seconds to play in the half. What was that score? <laughs> Texas 7, Oklahoma nothing. Uh, PA match. Yeah. I thought he said 27 to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Then completed the 10 yard line, trying to get it to Brad Muster and covering with J.C. Pearson. 
On the earlier play, Fred Small, number five, was uh, really having decided to have lunch with Fred Buckley. He, spent, he was right in his face. This time, Stanford's going to key on him. They know he's probably coming. They're going to double team him this time. This is about the only way to slow him down. Well, hold him a little bit helps. Just grab, hold, and hold. Who is that? <laughs> Deaton, 64, decided he would just hold him. That's one way to stop Fred Small. <laughs> it was fourth down. The ball goes over. Washington in possession now, leading 27 to 3 in the closing seconds of this half. Kirky Jackson and Walt Hunt are the setbacks. We want another ball. Got the wrong ball. shoveled to Wyman. It was almost a play like uh, the finish of the Cal Stanford game. <laughs> it's in that mold anyway. It'll be first and ten at the 38 with 10 seconds. There, Kane makes the interception. He's stymied. He pitches the ball back to Ed St. Jim. Jim finally gets it to Wyman. Very creative, innovative. They've seen this play uh, kind of re reviewed a few times, so they can appreciate it. And everything but the trombone player. That's <laughs> the one they missed. Buckley. Going long, but not long enough, intercepted at the five-yard line. And it's <laughs> Vesley Jackson with his second of the day. Time has run out as he was running it back. Jackson on the end of second. Score at the end of the first half. The Huskies 27 and Stanford 3. We'll return after this word from your local station. Point in the season. You've got to feel like they cannot uh, lay back. They've got to go throw the ball. Even though Fred Buckley's only got statistics that are, at best, totally unimpressive at 2 at 15 for 60 yards, you've got to run your game plan. You've got to go after them, and you're going to probably see them throwing the ball again. They've got to get some points on the board, make something happen. Washington, just control them defensively. Don't let anything uh, happen on your end of the field. Don't make mistakes offensively. You'll recall that Stanford won the toss initially and deferred to the second half, so they've elected to receive. Jager's kicking off. Scott and Nevada deep for Stanford. Jager puts it up. Avant going to run it out to the 5, to the 10. To the 15-yard line. That'll start first down and 10 yards to go at the 15. Red Buckley quarterbacking Stanford. He's doing that, of course, because quarterback John Pay was injured in the game against Arizona State. Fractured a knuckle joint on the index finger of his right hand. Surgery was performed. Hit his hand on the helmet of Arizona State defender Tom Gerber after releasing the pass. His father said that when Pay was 12 years old, he broke a thumb doing the same thing. First and 10 to the 15 yard line. Buckley to Scott. Running off the tail back and he gets across the 20 out to the 21 yard line. It is not fun, Lindsay, when you're a Fred Buckley and you've played poorly in the first half and you have to come back out and play in the second half. You know now because the score is 27 to 3, the pressure's on you. You're going to have to throw. You're going to have to perform. It's not a comfortable position for a young man in his second start to be in. Sure, that's true. Emil Harry just came into the next play. Harry and James are the wide receivers. Leave it inside to Brad Muster at the 24. I can remember a couple of games my sophomore year back at Oklahoma where I, I would literally would cringe when that receiver would bring in the play that I was going to have to perform or do something because <laughs> you just really want to go into a shell and say, Coach, I really don't feel very good about this play. You can't do anything. I don't want to take this play. I'd rather take a bus. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Is there anything else? Are you, or you can call timeout and go debate it. <laughs> Third down and a yard to go here. Nelson, tight end, moves over to the right side. And a pitch to Scott. 
for the one, and I think he got it. Reggie Rogers made the tackle, six feet, seven inches tall, 235 pounder. Came here on a basketball scholarship. Younger brother of Don Rogers, UCLA and the Browns. Ball is on the 27 yard line, first down and 10 yards to go. James and Harry are wide. Buckley, the quarterback. Well, they found some running room for Muster, and Muster across the 50. Under the 48 yard line, Brad Muster. The sophomore running back. 25 yard pickup for Muster. Watch Brad Muster come right towards the camera, right up. Watch the blocking, they kind of a cross block. Everybody is walled off. Muster hits the hole quick, 4-4-4-5 four, 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 speed. Able to jump right into the secondary very quick. That's a dimension that will help take the pressure off of Fred Buckley, the quarterback. Now they're first and 10 again. Muster's carried 13 times for 107 yards. Scott carrying, and he got to the 46. Final score, Alabama beat Penn State 6-0. Crimson Tide got a one. Boy, that makes them two and four on the season. Texas 10, Oklahoma nothing at halftime. I'm not concerned about that score. I'm sure you it are. It means very little to me. <laughs> BYU 21, Wyoming 20 at halftime. Second down and eight yards to go here. Scott and Morris are the running backs. It's Morris carrying. Morris to the 42. I asked the question to Jack Elway. Coach, why hasn't Stanford thrown the football? I mean, besides throwing the football, why haven't they had a balance in the running attack for years? And part of it was they felt like it was very difficult to recruit skilled athletes, the numbers that it takes to establish a running game. And the second thing, from Frankie Albert on back in 1940 and 41, they started throwing the football, and they were afraid that running backs, if they came here, would be overshadowed by great quarterbacks. And there have been a bunch from Albert, Garrett, Brody, Plunkett. I see. Barilla, who else? John Elway. <laughs> They've had a few. Third down and eight at the 42-yard line. Uh -oh. Scott got the ball, and he got some people at the same time. Tafano got there first. That was either a trick play or a bad play. <laughs> Scott thought it was a bad play. <laughs> Doug Robeson comes in to do the punting now. You get back in that Stanford football history, of course, Frankie Albert went from a left-handed tailback to a left-handed whiz or a T quarterback. And the system changed. Robeson's had 28 and 37 yards on each of these two preceding kicks. Wow, just got that one off. Fair catch signal goes up. And it is made by Malice. And a penalty marker goes down at the 26-yard line. 23-yard punt. Jim Rogers was the man putting the pressure on the kicker. Penalty is indicated against Stanford. Interfered with the man catching the punt, Ron Malice. We've got two number 12s on the team, so if you're sitting at home and say, hmm, that was Hugh Millen. No, this is Ron Milas. With long the opportunity as those... to catch the ball, five yards, first down, timeout. There you go. All of that and timeout. And the Huskies are still leading 27 to 3. 11 minutes to play in the third quarter. Washington 27, Stanford 3. Washington with the ball first and 10 at their own 30 yard line. And Robinson are the setbacks for Hugh Miller. Penny. And he got across the 40 yard line out to the 41. Lindsay, we do have two 12s. I want to make that comment. There's our quarterback number 12, our first 12, Hugh Millen. And then there's our second tw tw number 12, Ron Milas. And as long as those two players are not on the field at the same time, they are allowed to wear the same number. 
Thomas is the man deep on punt returns, and the other is the quarterback, so if they should be on the field at the same time, they're in trouble. Yes, the rule states you cannot participate at the same time, identically. But he just got rid of it. Hugh Millen just unloaded it. Darren Barris was hanging on it. He's got to put pressure on the quarterback, Hugh Millen. This time, he will throw off balance and throw a poor pass. And also, with people hanging on you, it's not easy to throw a very good pass. He is still very strong. You, that happened to him a little bit last week and a couple of weeks ago against Michigan. He was able still to get the ball away and throw it. Sometimes that can work against you. Millen completes it. Out to Jacques Robinson. At the 41 yard line. Troy Cook made the tackle. Watch Garen Barris, number 80, right there in the middle of your screen, take on two blockers. He's able to shut them and be able to get to the quarterback and under heavy pressure still take Hugh Millen to the turf. You've got to get those linemen, those offensive linemen away from you. Use your upper body strength and force the issue. That way, twist it off of two of them, able to get to the quarterback. Third and nine at the 41. Green in motion back to the inside. Millen with the ball. Incomplete to Green. Darren Barris again, pressuring the passer. I want you to look at the technique of Barris, number 80. Watch him get away from that offensive lineman. Watch him a quick, it's a push-pull method. You push, then you pull him. Get by him, watch him tattoo who, oh my. I can't even, oh, that's not fun. I want you to know there's nothing fun about being in that situation. Van Cleland in to do the punting. He's punted for 30, 53, and 33. Emil Harris back deep to receive it for Stanford. Harry lets it hop and lets it roll inside the 20 to the 19. So they'll start first and 10 at the 19-yard line, a 40-yard punt. Second by Muster. He got two out to the 21 to make it second down and eight yards to go. Washington leading by a score of 27 to 3, and we have 9 minutes, 23 seconds left in the third quarter. Fred Buckley, senior quarterback from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, had his first start of his career last week against UCLA. Harry and James are wide. Buckley. To James, and he scampers out to the 35-yard line. Pearson finally brought him down. 14-yard pickup. First and 10. This time, Washington had an outside blitz. That means the defensive secondary on this particular play, Pearson was making the blitz. They go man coverage. There's James inside, looking inside for the ball, moving towards it, makes the reception. Good pickup by the offensive line of handling the blitz. Buckley knowing they're going to a man coverage, throwing the ball, strike for the completion. Buckley with a pitch taken by Scott. Kevin Scott goes to the 38-yard line. Second down and seven yards to go at the 38. Rogers made the tackle, Jim Rogers. Talking to the Washington defensive coaches, they say the most difficult thing to teach on defense, at least in their style of play, is to teach their defensive people to be patient, realizing that the offense is going to have the big play occasionally. Don't get uptight about it. You've got to bend a little bit, but just don't break. And that's the style of play. Don't give up the big play. Know that they're going to get, have some success. Let's come right back. Okay. And he completes it across midfield. Harry with the football, and he stops at the 46-yard line. Milas made the stop. 16-yard pickup. 16-yard pickup on the play. Watch 
the Washington defense. Here are the route runners, but watch the Washington defense. This is what makes great defensive football teams. Watch them swarm to the ball. There's one defender. There's two, three. In the picture, four, five, six men will converge on the ball. That's good defense. That's Don James's style of play. Quickly, four for 17, 90 yards, and four interceptions. Leave this one on the ground to Muster. Cross to the 44-yard line. Got two on the play. Fullerton State 14, San Jose State nothing at halftime. Fullerton State's undefeated. They're 6-0. Oregon State 3, California nothing at halftime. UCLA 10, Washington State nothing in the second quarter. Pacific 14, New Mexico State nothing in the first quarter. Long Beach State 24, Utah State 22 in the fourth quarter. Buckley. Scott at the 10 yard line. First down there. Rogers was there defending. 34 yard pickup on the pass to Kevin Scott. This time, man coverage. Watch Kevin Scott. Perfectly thrown ball by Fred Buckley. Here's the secondary. They're in a blitz situation. They've got to pick up their man. There's Scott right there. They were zoned to one side and man-to-man -man on the other side. That's how Scott was able to make the reception. People with, people with the free safety moving to the ball. First and 10 at the 10. Muster to the five-yard line, just outside it. Fred Small made the stop. Spotted outside the five. Eastern Washington 14, Montana 7 in the third quarter. Idaho 10, Weber State nothing in the second quarter. Reno, Nevada, Reno, Nevada, Reno 21, Montana State 13 in the third quarter. Well, it's Reno, Nevada. I mean, kept trying to say. <laughs> Buster. To about the three yard line before Vesti Jackson brought him down. That's the kind of play that you could see a great running back emerging. Brad Muster came to the line of scrimmage. There was nothing outside, planted that right foot, drove in, squared his shoulders to the line of scrimmage, and made extra yardage. And boy, he's really played well today. 17 rushes for 119 yards. Two yards on the play, third and three. Ball's on the three yard line, third down. Scott and Muster are the setbacks. Harry's on a wide, wide left. Whistle, whistle. Stops play before the snap and a flag. Procedure I would suspect. It was the left guard that was in motion that time, Lindsay. Whatever for. Wanted to get a jump. Dead ball. False Two start. Baby, third down. Offense. Still third down. I think it's Matt Moran, number 61, the, be the left guard. Let's see if he, there he is. Wanted to get a jump. Just a little premature. So the ball moves back to the eight yard line. It's still third down. And the pitch. Oh my, must have got the ball. Pulled on the 10 yard line. Holmes made the tackle. Let's get an update on Ohio State, Illinois from New York. Lindsay, Ohio State has rolled up 28 unanswered points with this touchdown. Keith Byers is third of the day, the 12th straight game. He scored two or more touchdowns. They lead 28 to 24. Let's go back to Lindsay Nelson. All right, Pat. So in Columbus, Ohio, all must be right with the world and the local populace because Ohio State's ahead. That's right. Football's a 60-minute game, and you've just got to be patient. Believe in what you're doing. 27-yard attempt here now for Mark Harmon, who's been perfect this year. And he's now no longer perfect. His first miss of the year on either an extra point or a field goal, it is no good. Stanford, 27 to 3. Three minutes, 59 seconds left in the third quarter. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. Uh, Huskies with the football. 
Benny is carrying. And out to the 23-yard line. Second and seven. Dave Wyman made the tackle. That was a total offense. It doesn't appear to be the story of the game, but you know, when you're, there is the story. When Stanford's turned the ball over, as I said earlier, Washington did not have to go very long distance uh, to get their touchdowns or their scores, and that's been the story. Jammed it up, Hugh Mellon handed it off to Finney. Got maybe a yard. Garen Barris on the stop. Jones over, tight end left. <laughs> Millen to Patterson, incomplete. Penalty marker. Penalty marker thrown. Roy Cook was covering defensively. So the officials get it straight. Illegal use of hands against Stanford. Let's let's see what happens on the receiver. Oh well, yeah, just grab him around the jersey there. Just want to let him know he was there. Illegal use That's of right. hands on the defense before the pass was thrown. First down automatic from the previous spot. A first down automatic at the 29. Green out to the wide left. Hill is on the wide right. Dylan Green at the 31 yard line. Price, Eric Price made the tackle. Two yards on play. Right now, Washington has the game comfortably under control. Hugh Millen is playing well. They're experimenting a little bit, giving him more confidence as he they get ready to go through October, the November schedule, when you win national championships. Right now, Hugh Millen is a, really is just showing the confidence that he has, and they're doing things to give him even more confidence. Robinson, Jock Robinson, up to the 40-yard line. Garen Barris made the stop. And that's a first down. At the 40. Green's on a wide left. 14. 14. Ian Robinson to set back. Mellon complete up the middle, taken by Robinson. Jock Robinson across the 45 to the 46. Dave Wyman. Washington is taking advantage of some disciplined linebackers for Stanford. They're active, they move around, they know where their drop positions are in the zone play. Watch this, the linebackers will drop, they read pass, they drop back. Now watch Jock Robinson come right underneath in the middle, watch him make the right cut. One linebacker kind of trips a little bit and he's able to make the right turn, turns to his left and goes upfield. Millen is 12 for 21, 143 yards, one touchdown, one interception. This is Penny. About the 48, 49 yard line. One thing that Don James does, you know, you don't see a whole lot of thousand yard rushers in the Washington system. The reason is that they rotate a lot of different running backs in the ball game. He wants them fresh, he wants them to play very well. He wants them to be at peak performance every time they're in the ball game. So he's moving Jackson and Robinson and Finney and Hunt in and out of the ball game to keep the backs fresh. Don James came from the football country of Massillon, Ohio. Tricky Jackson 
Outside the 45. 30 seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter. Washington's leading 27 to 3. Second down, seven yards to go at the 46. Hugh <laughs> brings him up, the clock still counting down. Jock Robinson all the way down to the 33-yard line. Time expires in the period. We'll return after this commercial break and a word from your local station. <laughs> that is a fair statement to make. Really, they've got to, Stanford's got to be frustrated because they thought they'd play better and they've just not been able to be consistent and they've made such critical mistakes that have cost them points and caused the differential in the ball game. So here we go with the fourth quarter. 27-3, Washington leading. First and 10 at the 33-yard line. Washington with the football. Short drop. One pump and one pitch. And Green is there, and Green's got a touchdown. Eric Price covering on that corner. 33 yards from Millen to Green. So on the first play of the fourth quarter, a touchdown pass for Washington, and conversion kicker Jeff Jigger comes in. Chris Chandler holds for him. It's good. And that makes it Washington 34 and Sanford 3. Eric Price is the only returning man in this secondary, and he really was taken advantage of on this particular play. Danny Green, the real explosive receiver, just ran by Price. Wasn't even a question mark. And the world continues. We go round and round. It's 34-3. For 176 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. Green has caught four for 89 yards in the TD. Jager's kicking off. Avant, Scott are deep. Scott's waiting. Scott, not going to run that one out. Got a kneel right there and take it at the 20-yard line. And one back against UCLA for 89 yards. So the Stanford Cardinal gets the ball, and they get it at their own 20-yard line. What a beautiful day in Palo Alto, California. Stanford Stadium with a seating capacity of 84,795. Jack Elway, in his first year as coach, he defeated Stanford the three previous years, which is San Jose State. Kevin Scott, that time, moved it out across the 20, about the 27 yard line. Ron Miles made the stop. Second down play coming. Carolina Park comes into the ballgame. He was on the injury list, but he's been working out this week. And is in the game. Number 34. And it's Muster. That Muster rambles out to the 44-yard line. Miles tripped him up. 17 yards for Muster. Again, Brad Muster really has added a dimension to Stanford that I think in the long run of his career will really make a difference overall because it gives them balance. At that time, the offensive line makes good line surge, controls the line, cuts the hole, and he's able to run through and make quite a gain. 19 carries for 134 yards. It's been a while since they've had a 100-yard rusher. Great day for Brad Muster. First and 10 at the 44. Well, he was trying to get it to Jeff James. But there were obstacles. Let's get an Ohio State, Illinois update from Pat O'Brien in New York. 
Lindsay, Doug Flutie may win the Heisman, but take a look at Keith Byers, his fourth touchdown of the day, 67 yards, and he loses his shoe before he goes into the end zone. He's making it a memorable homecoming at Ohio State as they lead 35 to 27. Let's go back to Lindsay and Steve. When this game is completed here, we'll be moving to that game, so you'll see the finish of it. Buckley. No. You've got to admire Fred Buckley. That time he saw Fred Small, number five, the outside linebacker, come right zeroed in on him, and he just stood right in the pocket to make the throw to Jeff James, even though he overthrew the ball. He stood right in the pocket, showed some poise and confidence. The previous pass, he threw it into a crowd. It was a sophomoric mistake, and he shouldn't have thrown the ball at all. Buckley is five for 20, 123 yards, and four interceptions. Third down conversions, they are three of eight. It's third and 10 here. Harry, Emil Harry across the 40 to the 39 yard line. Kelly made the stop with Milas. 17 yard pickup. Emil Harry is the senior receiver. He really, until this point, has dropped some passes that he should not have dropped this season. He's lost his concentration. This time he catches the ball. It's a little bit inside, a little too close to him, but he makes the catch. Three catches today for 88 yards. I know the Stanford coaches are pleased to see him concentrating and not dropping passes. Carl Morris is coming to the game. Harry has gone out. Morris is in the wide left here. Jeff James is wide left as well. They leave it on the ground. And it's carried by Park out to the 31-yard line. You've got to be impressed with their running attack. I mean, they are going against the number one defensive team in the country, and they're able to take the ball that time eight yards on the first down play. Third quarter, Texas 10, Oklahoma 9. That is a typical Texas-Oklahoma score. Kicking game is always the difference in that ball game generally. Stanford's rush for 169 yards today. Most of it has been Brad Mustard. Second and two, and Mustard carries. He was pushed back after he crossed the 30-yard line by Jim Rogers. We're going to check for the possible first down here now. And bring out the chain. It may be more kind to Brad Mustard to compare him to maybe a Marcus Allen, you know, because he has that kind of style. He that time he came to the line of scrimmage, it was the hole was filled or plugged. He was able to just sift and make that move to the left, just a little bit short of the first and ten. That'll bring up a fourth down. The last time that uh, Stanford had a 100-yard rusher in one game was Vincent White in the Arizona game back in 1982. So you can tell things have changed certainly here at Stanford. Fourth down. Inches to go. 12 minutes, 15 seconds left to play in the game. Park and Muster are the backs. Quarterback sneak, just looking for the inches with Buckley carrying. First and ten, he got it. Lindsay, we've been talking about the changes at Stanford. I think the changes were obvious. In December, Paul Wigan resigned. Jack Elway took his place. Jack Elway had 31 years' experience in college, uh, dealing with college athletes. Paul Wigan, when he came to Stanford, had zero. The system was college-oriented for Jack Elway. It was pro-oriented for Wigan. I think he's a, he's a really, uh, Jack is more like a, a coaching, teaching type coach. Wigan was a manager. We'll go on to some more comparisons in a minute. Buster. And he gets to the 22-yard line. Don Hadley made the tackle. Jack Elway is very simple in his style. 
Wigan was very complex. And I guess probably the greatest contrast to the fact that some of his players says that, you know, that the Wigan staff was more like wine and cheese, but Jack Elway's kind of the beer and nachos type of guy. And I, I think that the players have certainly taken to that style of play. Jack does not object to that description. No, he does not. He, in fact, I think he uh, yeah. kind of appreciates it. Second and two. Buster again. Used to be about a yard short. There was a young, one young man that uh, visited Stanford during the recruiting season sometime in January, and when he got back home, he was trying to figure out how to describe Jack Elway, and he said he was a cross between Colombo and Ironside. <laughs> 143 yards and 22 rushes for Brad Muster here today. Well, many times when there's a changeover in coaching regimes, a school will lose a year in recruiting, and uh, it takes them a year to catch up. They feel here that they did not do that, that their recruiting year was fine. Jack Elway says 80% of his job is recruiting, 20% is coaching. Buster looking for the yard. Did he get it? Referee is going to unstack him and take a look to see if we did. Fred Small made the stop. Bring out the chain again. <laughs> First down. <laughs> On second thought, he said, First down. The Stanford wave. It comes and goes. I don't think the wave has caught on at Stanford just yet. You went. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Stanford band has been doing the wave for years. <laughs> Ahead of their time. Well, there's a penalty marker, and there's a whistle, and a collision. Delay of game, offense, still first down. First and 15. At the 24. Buckley with the ball. Time to throw to Harry, incomplete. Second and 15 at the 24. Peoples covering. That's freshman. Tight end Snelson, and they're very high on him here. He gets the word. Trying to go down and find a play that can work in this situation for them. Second down and long. The story of the ball game's just been turnover. That's been the miscues of Stanford that has put themselves uh, in a very difficult situation. They just could not rally back and overcome it. James and Harry are wide receivers. That is taken by Muster to the 22-yard line. Crone made the tackle. The attendance here this afternoon, 44,500. 44,500 at Stanford Stadium. Beautiful afternoon, and this is where the Super Bowl will be played next January. Over the middle, hanging on for dear life. Buster has the football. He's down at the four-yard line. Hanging on was Allen to pull him down at the four. 18-yard pickup. Watch the effort. Really does a great job. Buckley this time dropping back, 
right across the middle. As good a coverage as you could have, but the play with ball was right where it had to be. Muster makes the catch. Who was hanging on? Was that uh, Tufano? Tufano or Allen? One, One of the two. Three. I couldn't tell the number. He was hanging on for dear life. He was man coverage on that back. <laughs> Park Garrett, second down and goal. Oklahoma 15, Texas 10 in the third quarter. Boy, that that game is not over till it's over. Is that a fair, uh, <laughs> overused uh, statement? It's not over till it's over. And it's played on the state fairground and the state fair of Texas, and sometimes it's the biggest attraction at the fair, I'll tell you. Well, there are two ball games played that weekend, one on Commerce Street and one on the Cotton Bowl. So. <laughs> One, generally, the one on Commerce Street is more exciting. And rougher. <laughs> Buster. Pull down after he's crossed the five-yard line by Joe Kelly. I've said it all day, but Brad Muster really has some talent. He has really assaulted this defense and gone right at them in, in very difficult to situations. He's been able to make big plays, running the football, giving Fred Buckley, taking the heat off the quarterback so he can have an opportunity to throw the ball. And to have a running game really will make Stanford a better team in the years to come. Third down, goal to go. 17th play in this series. And touchdown. Taken by James, Jeff James. Boom, boom, Jeff James, touchdown. coming in. The score right now is 34 to 9. You got to admire the perseverance of Fred Buckley, the quarterback. He really hung in there and controlled it. Timeout taken by the University of Washington. And so Stanford will attempt a two-point conversion here. Six minutes, 58 seconds remaining to be played in this game. Wide receivers out left and right, Harry and James. Ed Buckley, the quarterback. Oh, no, he was too far. Couldn't hang in. It was Emil Harry, so it's no good. And the score remains. The Huskies 34 and Stanford 9. Well, moms and dads the world around give ball. Boy, you start scrambling. The offensive line's got to stay in their blocking zone area. This time, Buckley's getting all, gets the ball away from his body, and finally goes up, throws the ball, the only place it can be thrown. Harwin is ready. Jackson and Hill are deep for Washington. <laughs> Dribbles it. And around the 50-yard line is the congregation. Jack Elway, an interested spectator along that sideline. Ball was illegally touched, and so it is taken by Washington. Got to go 10 yards before you can recover it. So Washington gets the football. Here's the remaining schedule for Washington. They play Oregon, Arizona, California, USC, and Washington State. Sicaro is in that quarterback now. Millen is out, and Paul Sicaro is in that quarterback. Taken by Cookie Jackson. Moves to about the 47 yard line. Wyman made the tackle, and Prukop. Here's Stanford's remaining games. Washington State, Oregon State, USC, and we'll be back here for that one. Arizona and California. 
Shall we come back or just stay? With this <laughs> weather, you ought to stay. Sekiro rolling and looking and throwing and incomplete. Walt Hunt, the intended receiver. Paul Sikoro, this is his fourth year in the program. He doesn't have a whole lot of experience as far as playing experience, but uh, he understands the system and he understands the style of play that Don James wants out of him as a quarterback. And with Hugh Millen, there were a lot of people that were pressing after last week's game that maybe Hugh Millen was a poor choice for Don James to have his quarterback. But James has the tradition of staying with quarterbacks. Cowan, Fleur, uh, Warren Moon, he sticks with quarterbacks. Third and seven at the 47, Sikoro. Incomplete. That'll bring up a fourth down. Tony Roden, the man for him, was intended. But on fourth down, Athene, Cleland, the punter, is under the ball game. Emil Harry is dropping back to field it. Cleland has had punts of 30, 53, 33, and 40 so far. Average 39 yards. Harry's deep to receive this one. Harry calls for a fair catch and makes it at the 11 yard line. They'll start first and 10 at the 11 yard line. For the Cardinal. Buckley. At the 22 yard line. And now let's go for an Illinois Ohio State update with Pat O'Brien. Lindsay, it is the Trudeau and Byers show. Byers ran for four touchdowns. Here's Jack Trudeau's fourth touchdown pass. And after the dancing, he ran it in for the two-point conversion. We are tied in Columbus. Let's go back to Lindsay and Steve. All right, you can come back to us, and we'll be coming back to you at the conclusion of play of this game. We'll switch over there so you can see how that one finishes up. First and 10 at the 23. to about the 28. Curran made the tackle. Lindsay, to support the point that Stanford's offense is, is a little bit different this year, there is a flag on the play. Washington's defense this year is ranked number one, giving up 229 yards a game. Before this drive began, Stanford was at 346 yards. And Buckley's had a significant improvement in the second half than he, what he performed at uh, in the first. Holding indicated against Washington. Stand for fans in favor of that. Holding. Defense. First down. First and ten at the 39-yard line. defending at Samuel Harry. 61 yards. One yards and one touchdown. Alana Park is coming back into the ball game now on a two-point conversion. Buckley getting checked out. James and Harry wide, double to the right side. Park in motion to the right side. Incomplete. Conversion attempt is no good, and the score remains. Washington 34, Stanford 15. This time, Fred Buckley, the quarterback, really airs it out, throwing it to Harry. Watch Emil Harry, number 10, cutting across the middle on the deep flag route. 
or post route, excuse me, right across the middle, and the play ball is thrown perfectly right where it had to be, beating J.C. Pearson number four. So it is 34 to 15. Looks like Jackson and Hill are deep to receive it, but they're only along the 20 yard line anticipating another onside kick attempt. There's the onside kick attempt. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are for Stanford Brad Muster, the running back who's had such an outstanding day today. And for Washington, quarterback Hugh Millen. A check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each college's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. Buckley. He's had a tough day. Second half, though, he's much improved. 8 of 11 for 175 yards and two touchdowns. So he has really got his confidence back up. Washington recovered the onside kick and the handoff goes to Finney, and he picks up about a yard to the 50-yard line. Four minutes, 57 seconds remaining to be played in this game, and the clock is running. Sicaro in there at quarterback, backing up Mellon, who started and played most of the game. Lindsay, so many times people talk about confidence. It really is important. If you have a bad half, it's important to come back and play better the second, second half because it'll make a difference in your football team and the way you play. Pat oh. Mitchell was well on the way. Here's how the top 20 fared today. Texas against Oklahoma in the fourth quarter. Oklahoma's leading 15 to 10. Washington, of course, was ranked number two. And against Stanford, they're leading 34 to 15 with four minutes, 33 seconds left to play. B.C. and Temple play tonight. BYU and Wyoming in the fourth. It is Wyoming leading. Nebraska and Missouri with Nebraska leading there. SMU and Baylor with SMU leading there. Ohio State and Illinois, you'll see the rest of that as soon as this game is over. Florida State against Auburn Knight, Miami of Florida against Cincinnati Knight. Second down and four yards to go here. Washington with the ball. Got the first down. Jock Robinson picked it up first and 10 at the 39. Let's check out the second 20 now and see how they fare. Penn State and Alabama, Alabama winning. LSU and Vanderbilt at night, Oklahoma State idle. Iowa swamp Purdue 40 to 3. You see that next week on, you see Iowa next week on CBS. And Georgia beat Ole Miss 18 to 12. First and 10 at the 39 yard line. Second off. Incomplete. Here's the last five now. Auburn, Florida State, Knight. South Carolina beat Pittsburgh 45 to 21. Florida beat Tennessee 43 to 30. Kent beat Mississippi State 17 to 13. And Georgia Tech and Virginia play tonight. South Carolina is now 5 and 0, Lindsay. They've, they've got uh, really some good things happening. Joe Morrison's doing a good job. Make that Kentucky and Mississippi State. Kentucky it is. 397. Second down, 10 yards to go. Incomplete. Hill was the man for whom it was intended. Personal foul against Stanford. That was a good call. Garen Barris, number 80, the defensive tackle for Stanford. After the play was over with, was a little bit overly physical with uh, the quarterback. There he is, Varus, a little bit frustrated, a little bit disappointed, maybe in the team's play, and uh, was uh, kind of kicking around on Mr. Sicaro, the quarterback of Washington. It's right call. After the play, personal foul, defense, first down. At the 25-yard line of Stanford. Oh, 
David Trumbull. Ronzel Hill of the wide receivers. Trumbull in motion across. Ticker leaves it on the ground to Robinson, Jacques Robinson. Down to about the 11 yard line. Kane made the stop. That'll be a first down. Stanford defensive coach is trying to take some chances late in the ball game, maybe cause a bad play, get the ball, the turnover, have a chance to go score. Dave Wyman, number 92, the linebacker, he was on a blitz. Jock Robinson ran right by him, and he was out of his position, and that's where the play was going. First and 10 at the 11-yard line for Washington. Washington leading by a score of 34 to 15. Three minutes, 53 seconds left to play in the game. Sicaro. 96. 96. Leave it on the ground to Finney. He gets out to the seven yard line. Dave Wyman on the tackle. Spotted outside the seven. Second and six. Trumbull's in a wide right. Trumbull in motion across. Cut off at the pass, says Jacques Robinson. However, he stays alive, gets inside the five, and down near the three-yard line. Jock Robinson can be as good as he wants to be. Watch him get stopped. It looks like he just really doesn't have the effort right here. All of a sudden he turns back. Nope, don't want to go that way. Watch him turn back against. That's the athletic ability. That's the, the Jock Robinson that Washington coaches want every Saturday. He's not been able to stay at a consistent level. Third down play. Tremble in motion across. Again, Jock Robinson stops the three yard line. That will bring up a fourth down. Prokop made the last stop. Jeff Jager coming out. He's the placement man. This will be a 22-yard attempt. Chandler holding for him. He has made field goals of 42 and 22 yards so far today. And it's good. Three more points for the Huskies. Thirty-seven fifteen to score. Executive producer of college sports is Kevin O'Malley. Our producer, Rick Sharp, directed by Larry Cavalina. Associate producer, Bob Rowe. Associate director, Rich Nelson. And all the people whose fine work have made this telecast possible from Stanford Stadium on the campus of Stanford University here in Palo Alto. got to like the schedule that Washington has going into the stretch of the season. You really win national championships in October and November. And uh, I think that they've got an opportunity that uh, is probably as good as anyone in the country of winning it. The country doesn't have a dominant college football team. There they've got uh, Arizona is a team that's probably the biggest surprise in the conference. But with Washington State not having to play UCLA or Arizona State, they've got a great chance. Jager kicking. And Avant is in the end zone. And Scott moves in front of him and bobbles the ball and the scramble is on at the seven yard line and it's retained by Stanford. We want to thank our spotter Bill Friel, our statistician Roger Riley. Ohio State has just scored to take the lead. We remind you again that the moment this game is over we'll be switching out there so you can see the remainder of that one. Ohio State now leading Illinois 38 to 35. Our thanks to Stanford Director of Athletics Andy Geiger, Head Coach Jack Elway and his staff, and SID Steve Rakzinski, and to University of Washington Director of Athletics Mike Lude, Head Coach Don James and his staff, 
and the SID, Chuck Nimai. And, of course, to the Pacific 10 Conference and its executive director, Tom Hansen, who is here this afternoon. Minute and a half to play. 37 to 15, Washington leading. Buckley from the goal line. Well, it's intercepted on a deflection and being returned by Rill, and David Rill is down at the 16-yard line. Washington with another one. This makes the sixth turnover by Stanford. Fred Buckley is really having a tough day. But you've got to cut loose. You've got to try to make something happen. You're behind. Try to do something. He throws the ball behind right there to Fono. Tips the ball up, and reel number 38 is able to do the tip drill perfectly and intercept the ball. Turnovers have been the story. Yards rushing by Stanford and passing mean nothing. It has been the mistakes, the turnovers. Five interceptions thrown today. <laughs> Moves across the 15 down to about the 14. There's a penalty marker thrown apparently after the play. Hunt was carrying. So penalty is being checked out. This game's got to be a great confidence builder for Washington's offensive coaching staff. They needed desperately to play well today because they felt like that they were getting ready to go into the stretch. And Don James agreed yesterday with me that he thought that he said, don't tell them I said we're talking about national championship. But those points that we've made do favor Washington and uh, their bid for the Rose Bowl and a national championship. Did you ever notice when you mention national championship to any coach any time before it's actually handed to him, he sort of quivers a little bit. <laughs> he says, no, don't say I said it. <laughs> he backs After away very quick. Personal foul, defense, second down, half the distance. Washington in possession here now inside the 10-yard line. Sikoro's the quarterback. Rock is running with one minute left to play in the game. On the ground. Vino DeFeo carrying. Gets it down there to about the three. I see another marker on the side there. Personal foul against Washington. Personal foul against Stanford, offsetting. That means that some of the frustration of the afternoon is showing up here in the late afternoon. You cannot afford to lose your poise either side of the ball. The ball game is pretty much determined. It's determined 37-15. Stanford doesn't want them to score. They don't want the margin of victory to be any greater than it already is. And so there's a little bit of frustration on both sides of the ball. Washington. These are second and third team players. They want to put the ball in the end zone. Well, we'll get it all straight here in a moment. We have 53 seconds remaining on the clock. Ball is at the nine yard line. First down. Now the referee is going to go over to, I suppose, deliver a message or explain it to Jack Elway and his staff. It was a brief message, whatever it was. Washington leading 37 to 15. First, down. First. Up there. We're trying to figure where to spot the ball. It's at the nine yard line, but the sticks aren't. Three yard line is now where the down marker is placed. And now it's moved back. Very interesting. They're in com complete control of this ball game. It's <laughs> <laughs> on the nine yard line, and so is the marker. Sicaro, quarterbacking still. 
First down and go. The fail. 31 seconds on the clock. Price made the tackle. Outside the seven yard line. Second down. Sekiro yes. still quarterbacking. Again, it was DeFeo inside the five. This has got to be a tough moment for a coach because he's got second and third team players out on the field that want to score. Don James probably doesn't really care if they score. Jack Elway doesn't want them to score. And it's kind of a, it's really a difficult situation. These kids want to put the ball in the end zone. Third down, four seconds to play. <laughs> Didn't get in there. It was DeFeo, and he didn't make it, and time ran out. So they did not score. He was stacked up there on the two-yard line as the game came to a close. And Washington has won another. They are 6-0. and oh. Won six, lost none, and will be very high in those rankings. So it was Washington this afternoon for the most part. And they have won this game by a final score of 37-15. to 15. And we are going, of course, to be taking you in just a moment for the finish of the Illinois-Ohio State game. This is Lindsey Nelson with Steve Davis. And let's go now to Pat O'Brien in New York. All right, Lindsey, thank you very much. We want to get you up to date on one score. Lindsey was talking about the rankings. In the Cotton Bowl this afternoon, Oklahoma is now leading Texas 15 to 10 in the fourth quarter. And era, the Huskies were number two in one poll. Oklahoma was three in another. Oklahoma was two in one. Huskies three in another. If Oklahoma holds on, who's number one? Well, I think Washington's a classy team, and but I'd have to vote for Oklahoma because they have knocked off, if they hold on to the score, knock off number one, they'd be deserving to be of uh, being number one next year. Well, it's been a long... Next year, next week. <laughs> next week. It's been a long time for Barry Switzer. And in 1978 was the last time he was ranked at number one in a weekly poll. Okay, the Parsegan poll. When we come back, we're going to have highlights of the Illinois-Ohio State game. We'll have